If you looked up the phrase, got off to a bad start in some weird dictionary that includes phrases, well, you'd see a picture of Assassin's Creed Mirage. That's not to say it recovers from that bad start, but well, we'll get there. I've been playing Mirage for about a week, thank you of course to Ubisoft for providing me with a review code, but unfortunately, despite being pretty interested in this game, Mirage struggles hard to match even the fairly low expectations I think most people, including myself, had for this one. Why? Well, let's just get straight to that, starting with what I think you really need to hear most. Listen, if all you want out of Mirage is for a few boxes to be checked, boxes that will give you the slightest little feeling of nostalgia towards the early games, then you will get that here, if you don't care at all about the execution of any of those ideas. Yes, stealth is a bit more important this time around, and yes, you're playing as an actual assassin in a classic setting, but to be completely honest and upfront with you, after over 25 hours with this game, which is about everything, those checked boxes are almost the only appeal of Mirage. Sure, they're great for marketing a return to the roots, but what actually matters, you know, the content of the game, well, it falls short almost across the board, with just a couple of exceptions. I mean, the combat, story, and parkour, woof, we will talk about those in a minute. But first, what does this game get right, if anything, or at least, what does it not completely miss the mark on? Well, the one part of Assassin's Creed Mirage that feels like a ton of care went into it is the setting, Baghdad. Mirage's map is small, and for the most part, it's just the city in some surrounding empty desert, or mostly empty, but Baghdad itself is well put together. Only the structure of it is quality though, and I want to stress that, because for a game that's releasing in 2023 with only one major location, Mirage's open world is shockingly hollow, and I say that relative to the standards of this series. While the city may look sort of lively at first glance because plenty of NPCs are walking around, just know that what you see is all you get. That being nameless NPCs you can't talk to that wander aimlessly in a world you're unable to interact with. I wish I were exaggerating for effect, but I'm not. When you aren't doing a quest, there is no one in this city you can speak to aside from merchants. And while one of the official gameplay showcases hyped up open world events, you know the type you should be able to stumble upon while exploring, I am telling you that those are so rare they're hardly even worth a mention. I was 11 hours into my playthrough before I came across one of these. One. And keep in mind that Mirage is a game that will have you going back and forth across the same sections of the map constantly. In the early hours before grinding out the fast travel unlocks, which really is a grind, you'll be spending more of your time getting from objective to objective than you will doing quests. And because the city feels like a hollow shell, one of your only options for entertaining yourself while moving through it is the parkour system, which, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's pretty subpar in Mirage. A sticking point for Assassin's Creed fans is always the parkour. People talk about the movement in these games more than almost anything else, and it's funny I say sticking point because that's not a half bad description of how the movement in Mirage feels. I think it says a lot that even in the official gameplay showcase for this game, the one from Ubisoft, you know the type that is meant to make the game look as fluid and cinematic as possible, well even in that footage you can still see the stiffness of the parkour in this game, and I promise you it plays more awkwardly than it looks, and it already doesn't look great. At all times it feels like Basim, the protagonist, is snapping on and then momentarily sticking to wherever it is you land. There's no precision or fluidity to be found here, and because there's an attempt at emphasizing stealth and verticality in this game, well, the awkward movement ends up really letting down what they tried to build Mirage around, which is the stealth. I say tried because whether it was or not, Mirage rarely gives you the impression that it was made from the ground up as a stealth-based game. Instead, almost all of the we're returning to the roots mechanics feel a little tacked on, like they're less of a core feature and more an angle, one that could be used to market a game that started out as a DLC to Valhalla, because at its core, that's what Mirage is and that's how it feels. Now even with that being said, I should point out that the stealth isn't horrible, in fact it's probably the best thing this game has going for it gameplay wise, even if that's not really saying much. When you start, it's about as basic as can be, you know, crouch, press one button to kill, and that's it. If you've played a game released in the past 15 years with stealth as like a side mechanic, then you know what you're getting into here, just with potato AI that's worse than I could have ever expected. I mean, you will kill guards directly in the line of sight of others, and they will not notice, ever, so 
You better get used to playing around the very stupid enemies if you want to have any fun at all in Mirage. That is, if you're planning to play it. Now, there are some positives which kind of bring the stealth gameplay up a bit, like the gadgets you eventually unlock are pretty fun. The throwing knife, the blow dart, the smoke bomb, all solid, and they did help add some variety to the stealth, which was much needed, especially once you get them upgraded. What's more important though is that the gadgets did me the huge favor of letting me avoid melee combat a little more often, because Mirage really punishes you for open combat, just not in the way you might think. I say it punishes you not because you're meant to stealth all the time, you aren't and won't be given a choice in some cases, but instead it punishes you because the combat in this game is a punishment in itself. There is nothing to melee combat in Mirage, it's just press one button to parry, then press one button to kill 80% of the time. The remaining 20 you'll be fighting the other enemy type, and yes I said other because for the most part there are only two, the regular and large guards, and against the big boy you just have to dodge to the back of them before awkwardly hacking away at their backside to chip their health down. The melee combat, just being honest here, is by far the worst of any game I've played in several years, and it might be a little more understandable if open combat was extremely rare, like if it was used just a handful of times in the entire game, then you could maybe give it a pass if everything else made up for it. That's not the case though, open combat is far from rare in Mirage, even when you're stealthing as much as you can. And that's really a shame because to call Mirage's melee combat half-baked would be overselling it to an extreme, as it didn't even make it into the oven. You know what else missed the oven? The main story, the whole thing. Now, one of Mirage's finest qualities is that it's very short, yet still, despite that, the main quest feels like a maybe passable 6-hour story scraped very thin across 20. Now, no spoilers, I'm not going to show anything spoilery either, but after the prologue, this is the structure of so many main quests. You'll spend 5 to 10 minutes getting across the map to your next objective at a closed door, at which point you'll get hit with a 90 second cutscene giving you another objective as far away as possible. And then that objective will often be finding a piece of paper behind a door that needs a key, or as mentioned, the content, using that word loosely, will end up being just another very short cutscene and nothing else that you ran all the way across the map for. The main story is just filled with tiny amounts of content padded out to an extreme, and the only highlights, at least highlights to some extent, are the important assassinations, and it's not because of the story behind them, it's just that, to their credit, they do at least give you some freedom in your approach, nothing that'll make you think, but still, a bit of freedom, which was appreciated. Still, even at its absolute best, Mirage's main quest only has occasional moments where it's mildly interesting, mostly towards the very end. The majority of your time with it though will be spent completing tasks that would be considered really weak side content in a better game. Now you might be thinking if I'm saying that about the main story, what about the actual side quests? Well my goal with these reviews is to pack as much information into a short runtime as humanly possible, and with that in mind, just to know that the side quests in this game are the type of content that I think we all hoped had been left in the past. These quests almost exclusively come in the form of which I mean assassin contracts that you pick up at a notice board in your home base, and upon accepting them get ready for endless escort missions, and constant very repetitive requests to steal items from houses, and of course I couldn't ever forget the high octane foot races where a guy wants to race you for some reason, and that's it. There's essentially no story at all to these, the NPCs just say exactly what is required to give you the task and near nothing more. Side content in Mirage exists as a way to grind for resources, and that's about all. In fact, the bar got so low that around 9 hours in, I had to stop myself when I realized that I was impressed after the game required me to pick up an explosive and move it slightly so I could blow something up. Why had I suffered brain rot to the point where that surprised me? Well, because moving that explosive a short distance was the most I'd had to engage my brain in nearly 10 hours of gameplay. And while again, I wish I was exaggerating for dramatic effect, I'm not. Now a few closing things to note before wrapping this up, Mirage does have microtransactions which are mostly cosmetic, but you can also pay to immediately reveal the locations of all collectibles on the map. And it's worth noting that collectibles in this game include weapon and armor schematics, because how you upgrade your gear is by finding schematics out in the open world meaning you'll need to come across the exact schematic that is specific to the piece you want to upgrade. The other collectibles are all about what you'd expect, your standard treasures, relics, 
and little bits of lore that are mostly historical, you know, like what were the bathrooms like in the pre sharman era. And overall, that lore did seem like it was curated with care. I really liked that. Now, you also might have noticed that I skipped over talking about the very small skill tree in this game, and that's because there's very little to say about it. The skills are almost all very basic quality of life improvements, like being able to carry an extra health potion, or there's one that increases the range of your eagle vision, that sort of thing. Ultimately though, after beating this one, I just feel that Assassin's Creed Mirage is a game that never even really makes a solid attempt at being worth your time. It doesn't excel at anything, really, while even its very best moments are average. And in a year like this, is occasionally average good enough? I don't think so, and while Mirage was never going to be the game to innovate, I really think this entire franchise is in desperate need of taking a major step forward. Because without one, sooner or later it's just gonna end up getting left behind. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this review, consider leaving a like, as that's how YouTube decides what is worthy. And I will see you in what comes next, as I have a couple more big reviews planned for this month, as well as another big Witcher 3 video I've been working on, so consider subscribing if you'd like to see those. Thanks to the channel's patrons, as always, for their support, and that's it. See ya.